Welcome back everybody to the final part of the Rocket Hideouts 13 Scares of Halloween and welcome back to another edition of Manga Mania with me, Marty Rocket, looking a bit demonic today as you can plainly see. Um, I've got a special um, devil half mask um, for this occasion because today on Manga Mania as part of the 13 Scares of Halloween we are looking at Devil Man. This is to me, one of the greatest uh, animes I've ever seen in my entire life. Um, and also, it is probably one of Gona Guy's most famous and better known works. Maybe not here in the United Kingdom, but certainly in Europe and back in Gona Guy's home, homeland of Japan. Um, obviously, where this came from, and hopefully, we can superimpose a picture here of me when I was in Japan for my honeymoon. I got a picture of myself next to a huge uh, fabric poster stand thing of Devilman which was actually just an ad for a pachinko uh, place. So I guess that shows how famous and how recognizable Devilman still is. Um, but I'm sure despite how much I love this anime and despite how popular it is in Europe and back in Japan there are many of you out there who have never seen Devilman before and obviously that's the purposes of Manga Mania to educate you fine people on animes that were released by Manga Entertainment that you might never have seen before. So remember the only rule with Manga Mania is I have to own um, the anime in question on VHS and as you've seen I've got it right here. Now this one's a little bit special because Devilman is an original video animation um, and for those again who aren't aware, original video animations are usually um, animes that might not be made for TV, they might be made as um, one-off projects that went straight to video. Um, they usually were anything between 30 minutes and 2 hours long, something like that. Um, and a lot of the time there was never guaranteed to be a sequel to them. Um, because there's only so much you can cover in maybe 30 minutes or two hours, whatever it is. Um, and there was no chance of a sequel to whatever you watch being made um, to continue the story. With Devilman, with this tape, you get two um, original video animations in one. As you, can, as you can see, well maybe see there, it says two in one manga action. It has the episode The Birth and the second episode The Demon Bird which um, makes up two thirds of the original video animation but we'll get to that towards um, the, end of, the end of today's review because that's going to be quite important if I remember to mention it anyway. <laughs> so what's the anime about? Well strap yourselves in because for the next who knows how long we're in for a ghoulish hellish Halloween fright fest. Put your demon masks on and get ready. Let's see if you can walk the walk, so get ready for Devilman! So, as we begin the story of Devilman with the first episode, The Birth, we're introduced to the main protagonist named Akira Fudo. Now, Akira is a very shy, soft-spoken young man. You know, he's the kind of kid who wouldn't say boo to a goose, um, as you can probably tell by how he looks at the beginning of uh, Devilman. He certainly does look like a rather soft, gentle young kid. Um, his parents uh, were mysteriously killed or mysteriously disappeared um, as far as he knows on um, a, a project at the Arctic Circle so he's pretty much been adopted um, by the family of one of his best friends who's named uh, Mickey Makamura. So for most of his life Akira's been a shy um, introverted sort of kid as I said before until one one fateful day, um, a former best friend of his um, named Ryo um, appears out of nowhere. Akira's surprised to see him, but also very happy to see him because he's a best friend that he hasn't seen in years. Um, despite Akira being so happy to see his friend, uh, Ryo, his friend, isn't um, as jubilant and as happy as uh, Akira is. Ryo tells Akira he has to come with him immediately because 
Rio's got something very important he needs to share with Akira. Um, Mickey tries to protest this, but is um, persuaded not to come along by Rio, who <laughs> draws a knife on her, um, causing Akira to become quite concerned at his friend's behaviour, and obviously causing the viewer of this to be quite concerned as well, because after all, who actually pulls a knife um, on a young girl for no reason? So Akira goes off with Ryo, and Ryo tells Akira the story of his father who committed suicide not too long ago. Obviously, if that doesn't sound uh, horrific enough, Ryo shares with Akira that he suspects that his father had actually been possessed by some kind of demon. Because during the events that led up to his father committing suicide, Ryo's father actually killed the family dog, and then one stormy night actually tried to kill Ryo himself. Eventually not being able to take it anymore, his father does indeed commit suicide by burning himself alive. So, Ryo finally takes Akira back to his, his home, this huge mansion that uh, Ryo lives in, because his father, um, as, far, as much as I can remember, was quite a famous explorer and archaeologist. He takes Akira into this very cold room, which actually has um, the fossilized remains of a demon skull. And Akira obviously is quite weirded out by this, um, and he becomes even more disturbed when Ryo tells Akira to put on the skull over his head. Um, for the skull has special powers um, for anybody who wears it to see millions of years into the past when demons actually did roam the earth. You see, it wasn't just a theory that Ryo's father had been possessed by a demon, he actually was. Akira sees demons running wild millions of years in the past during the time when the dinosaurs um, were on the earth, um, and he needs a bit of consoling afterwards. Ryo hands him a glass of water, and as Akira tries to make sense of everything that he's seen, Ryo explains to him that demons... Um, up to a certain point did roam the earth, but they became encased in ice, in ice during the Ice Age. Rio then explains to um, Akira that the ice caps are melting, obviously due to global warming, and the demons will actually be back. Rio, not having anybody else to turn to, decides to rope in his old friend Akira into Rio's plan um, to fight back against the demons, because obviously Rio's desperate to put a stop to this, because if demons roam the earth, then we, the human race, are fucked. But before we carry on with the story any further, um, I just want to share right here that um, Devilman, The Birth, actually educated me on the Divine Comedy. I'd never heard of the Divine Comedy before, but when I obviously watched The Birth, um, Rio explains it quite well, as you're going to see here. Take it away. Are you familiar with Dante's work, The Divine Comedy? Uh -uh. Dante was an extraordinary Italian poet of the 13th century. His Divine Comedy is an epic work chronicling a journey through heaven, purgatory, and down into Hades. He wrote that in the lowest levels of hell he saw demons frozen in ice, and in the very coldest ice was the king of the demons. This creature's name was Lucifer, the evil one, God's old adversary, the Antichrist. So, with that explanation of the Divine Comedy out of the way, let's carry on with the plot. So, while Ryo tries to explain to Akira what he wants to achieve here, um, the mansion is suddenly attacked by demons that have started to manifest and appear around Ryo's mansion. Probably because of the um, sort of demonic entities that have been there already, with his father being possessed by a demon and the demonic skull that's there. Um, obviously, in a panic, Ryo and Akira run for it, get the hell out of Dodge, because there are demons now invading the house. At this point, Rio actually shows a kind of sadistic side, if you ask me, with the fact that he grabs his shotgun and starts shooting these demons. He actually looks like he enjoys it and gets a bit of a kick out of it. So the pair take off in Rio's car and haul ass as fast as they can away from the demons who are actually pursuing them. And the whole thing actually builds up and ends with just sheer balls to the wall action which is the kind of stuff that I enjoy seeing with explosive results. So now Akira has seen the full-blown fury and you know frightful animalistic tendencies that these demons have. These demons are now running the earth, not running the earth but running amok 
on on the earth and you know something's got to be done to put a stop to it so Rio takes Akira back to his mansion and actually lets him in on the plan that he's got the plan that Rio has is instead of being possessed by demons what they're going to try and do is allow a demonic entity to enter them but if they resist with their good hearts and you know fighting spirit all that sort of good Japanese uh, stuff they're hoping to control the demons and sort of meld with the demons to become some, some kind of demonic superman to do this Rio has gathered a bunch of people in his underground nightclub which he must have refurbished his basement into um, for a ritual known as the Sabbath he supplied everybody with a lot of alcohol and everybody's dancing around naked or half naked anyway and then the one last thing that is required for the Sabbath is plenty of blood so Rio actually starts glassing people left and right and smacking people with his shotgun um, to get a bit of a obviously bad atmosphere going um, and a huge brawl actually starts to take out between Rio and Akira and all the guys and even some of the girls that are in the nightclub um, the whole thing builds up to the point where the fighting stops and people actually become possessed by the demons and transform into the demons themselves in some quite graphic looking uh, footage here. From there everybody in the nightclub or at least most of the people in the nightclub become completely possessed and transform into the demons except for Rio and Akira. The pair have to look on absolutely dumbstruck that they're not feeling any demonic entities so obviously surrounded by all these demons Rio and Akira run for it until suddenly Akira feels like a ping run through inside him Okay, demons. This is it. I'm gonna send you straight back to hell. I've done it. I'm Devil Man. So now completely fused with a demon known as Ammon, who is actually one of the strongest demons from the depths of hell. This guy now, as I said before, who's called Devilman, begins to absolutely cut loose and just slaughter all the other demons around him. Possibly because of Akira's influence on, um, on Ammon, um, he actually starts to kill all the other demons. Um, you know, and that's the only way I can explain why he would do that. Um, unless, of course, Ammon's that kind of demon, I'm not entirely sure. But it's weird considering that all the other demons didn't start killing each other on the spot. So Devilman makes easy work of all these demons in an awesome sort of gore fest. And when it's all over, Akira um, returns to normal. Um, with Devilman obviously um, letting go of him for that, that point in time. Akira wakes up and is shocked to see all the dead demons around him. You know, they're all decapitated and eviscerated. And he looks around for Rio, absolutely scared that he might have murdered him. But eventually he does find Rio under a pile of um, demonic bodies and picks him up as he seemingly is dead. The birth actually ends with a naked Akira holding Rio close to him as he shows remorse for Rio obviously being harmed from all of this that happened. So now we move on to the second part of the videotape which is the demon bird. Um, it's not known what happened immediately after um, the events of the birth as we join um, Akira again back in the Makamura household which is where he lives since he was adopted by Mickey's family. It's become apparent that Rio 
or Akira rather, <laughs> has gone through um, a transformation in a lot of ways. Um, he's become more withdrawn, he seems more aggressive, um, and it's a completely different Akira to what Mickey and the rest of the Makamura family are used to. Akira, what's happening to you? But before anybody can actually figure out what's wrong with Akira, he takes off as a phone call that he answered has goaded him to travel to deep underground into the sewers, where he meets up with a demon known as Jinman. Now, Jinman is one of my favorite demons um, from the Devilman series, only because he's a big demonic turtle. Um, a big demonic turtle with a southern US accent and a big demonic turtle who makes it a hobby of his to consume the souls of luckless uh, dying people that he finds on his travels. Um, the bumps on his shell are faces of the people of, of the souls of the people that he's consumed, and they pretty much live. I guess it's some kind of um, fucked up limbo, if you like. Um, but obviously, Akira encounters Jinman. Um, and because of this, obviously, with Akira now being Devil Man, he feels compelled to um, fuck Jinman up for, again, a lack of a better term, because, you know, demons are the enemy. He goes to attack Jinman, but then he realizes that his mother is one of the bumps on Jinman's shell. With that in mind, Devil Man immediately becomes handicapped due to the fact that he doesn't want to actually turn into Devil Man in front of his mother. Jinman takes full advantage of this by starting to beat the hell out of Akira, who hasn't transformed into Devilman yet, who's holding back. It's only when Akira's mother's soul um, communicates with Akira telepathically and explains that she's already dead and that Jinman is just using this um, as a way to frighten Akira from transforming into Devilman, does Akira actually fight back and become Devilman? From there, Jinman actually meets a very grisly and violent end as Devilman takes out his full fury on Jinman. Stop it! Stop it! Don't break my soul! If you do, you won't just kill me, you'll kill all these people as well! Think I give a fuck? Think again! Akira leaves and um, he goes to visit his friend Ryo in hospital. As it turns out, Rio wasn't killed, but he was severely injured as he's been spending quite a bit of time in the hospital. From there, Rio and Akira go into a conversation about um, the natural order of life and how demons possibly might be the next sort of stage of uh, the ecosystem. And believe it or not, you know, I watched Devil Man when I was about seven or eight years old, so I actually learned about the ecosystem um, and, and it you know, life needing an equilibrium through Devil Man. And who knew that an anime about demons would be so, so educational to yours truly, but <laughs> that's what happens. Akira doesn't take kindly to what Ryo's saying, but Ryo actually turns around then and says if it's not the natural order of life for demons to kill off humans, then maybe there's a way for humans to actually fight back with, as Akira puts it, demon-busting kick-ass technology. But as Akira says, until such a time comes, Devil Man's going to be the demon's natural enemy. And it's from there that we get to the real sort of meat and potatoes of the demon bird. Akira, I guess, leaves Ryo to convalesce in hospital and goes back to his home at the Makamura residence when another demon appears. And this demon um, is a demon named Cyrene, or she's curiously called in this dub, Shirinu. Now, she's one of, I guess, Hal's meanest, roughest, toughest motherfuckers, considering the fact that she is hell-bent on killing Devil Man, and she's quite confident that she's going to do it. She sets a trap with a couple of other demons named Agwell and Galma, and they pretty much ambush the Makimura household. Um, first of all, by attacking uh, Mickey while she's in the bath, and second of all, by as weird as it sounds, putting Mickey's parents through the wall and through the ceiling. So now Akira, seeing all this, is getting pretty, you know, pretty angry because obviously that's the intention to goad him into it. When he hears Mickey scream, he rushes to the bathroom and starts to get into a fight with uh, Galmar, as you'll see here. There you are! 
Wow, but this is my old friend Amon. I've been looking forward to this for a long time. Gilmar! So as the fight goes on, Akira actually makes pretty easy work of Agwell and Galmar both and rescues Mickey. Um, and from there, it's then that Shirinu, or Cyrene, however you want to call her, actually strikes. It turns out that it was her plan all along to have Akira let his guard down after killing them both. And then actually grab Akira when he's least suspecting it so she can kill him off. She doesn't kill him outright, instead she grabs him and takes him on a tour of uh, Japan from the sky um, because she wants to kill him slowly. As she says, if he was um, a, a worthy opponent to her, she would kill him straight away, but the fact that Amon actually uh, melded with Akira means that he's no sort of worthy opponent to her. He's less than dirt in her eyes, so she's going to kill him slowly. That turns out to be a mistake, however, as Ryo suddenly reappears after sensing Akira being in trouble. After shooting um, Cyrene and being taken out by her, it gives Akira enough of a chance to change into Devilman, and we get just probably the greatest fight scene I've ever seen in an anime. You know, and you guys better strap yourself in because what you're going to see is only a fraction of the sheer awesomeness that you get to experience when you watch the fight between these two. It goes on for quite a while, it actually makes up at least the last quarter of the tape I'd say and it's an absolute blast to see. So the fight between the two, as I said, goes on and on quite a long while, but it's not boring in any sense, it's great to watch. Until it comes to a point where Cyrene is so battered and bloody, she's missing an arm, she's missing a wing, she's essentially dying. She runs off, beseeching Satan for help, who actually does make an appearance in a very cool scene in this movie. He sends another demon named, I think his name's Khan or Khan, something like that, to Earth to help Shirinu. Now, he proposes that the two meld together to become a super demon. Cyrene or Shirinu, whatever you want to call her, is apprehensive to take Khan upon his offer. Because she's dying, and it means if they melded together and her spirit was the dominant spirit of the, of the two, they would both die. But in a rather actually surprisingly touching moment, Khan says that he's willing to do it for her because he loves her and he always has. And he would gladly sacrifice himself so that she could taste the sweet sweetness of glory by killing off Devilman. So he rips his head off with his own tail, um, his own rhino-like tail because he, he, he looks, he's a rhino kind of demon I guess. He rips his head off and then Cyrene melds with him, coming, becoming some kind of fucked up centaur like thing from hell. Because Khan's dead and because now she's so filled with rage and anger and fury, she takes off in a full on stampede towards Devilman, who's injured himself. She gores the hell out of him, electrocutes him. And the only way he can get away is by sprouting his wings again and flying off 
Khan Sirene's horn. Now, I'm not going to give away the ending to Devilman at all because I think you need to watch it um, to see what happens in the end. But let me just tell you that the ending to Devilman is actually quite surprising. Devilman, the, de the birth and demon bird makes up two thirds of the anime as I said earlier. After these were made in the uh, 80s and early 90s or whenever it was, um, the story was put on hold but actually continued in sometime around nine, between 1999 and 2000 with Amon, the Dark Side of Devilman. Now, because that wasn't released by Manga Entertainment, I'm not going to get into much detail with it because it's not part of um, Manga Mania since it don't qualify. But let me just say this, if you thought the birth and the demon bird were kick-ass, you need to see Am on the Dark Side of Devilman, because believe me, if, if uh, the birth and the demon bird gave you a set of balls, Apocalypse of Devilman will rip your balls off. Suffice it to say, it is one of the most satisfying kick-ass animes I've ever seen, as I said earlier. Just the amount of blood, guts, gore, all that good shit, the demons, it, it's just one of the greatest animes I've personally ever seen. Now that might sound absolutely ludicrous to you, but you've got to remember that I grew up on anything that Manga Entertainment pumped out. And nine times out of ten, this is the kind of thing that Manga Entertainment pumped out, and I just thought that it was some of the best stuff I ever saw. A lot of people, you know, this isn't going to be for everybody because it can be seen as quite lowbrow and, you know, almost like a, a snuff video or a video nasty, really, with the amount of, you know, decapitations, eviscerations and limbs being ripped off and all the blood and the gore. It's just like, ugh, that's, that's kind of nasty. But you know what? If you're into it, Devil Man's going to be for you. But if you're not into it, you know, I guess you might want to take a pass on it. With that being said, though, I think, especially when it comes to Halloween, if there's an anime you want to watch, there are a few you can watch, but I do think that Devilman is required viewing. After all, Halloween is full of witches and demons, black magic and all that kind of stuff that the church frowns upon. You know, why not get a group of people together, sit round and put Devil Man on? This was available on DVD. Um, it's, out of, it's been long since out of print. Um, but again, you know, thanks to eBay and flea markets, this videotape and even the DVD can be yours. And it doesn't have to be yours for an expensive price either. I've seen this go for as little as £5 and I've seen it go for as expensive, you know, the listing price of this one, I bought it brand new, was $13.99 and, you know, a price of it today on eBay probably isn't going to stray very far away from that price. I recommend it thoroughly, as I'm sure, you know, you've figured out by now because I said it in the beginning, I love this anime. I love it to death and, you know, it was one of the first animes I did watch. Um, it was back at a time when... Channel 4 here in the UK would actually show anime way late at night um, and my old man actually taped it for me. Now why he would tape such a thing for a, a seven-year-old you know is beyond you and beyond me I guess but anything that was animated my, my dad would, would tape for me and to be honest I love him for it because if he didn't tape it for me and go oh I taped something for you last night and I didn't watch it I might have missed out on Devil Man, and this is one of the animes that made me a huge anime fan. This is one of those animes that convinced me that yeah, this Japanese anime stuff, it is you know it's the dog's bollocks as we say here in England, and it's something that I'm going to have to pay attention to and follow thoroughly. And you know what I did, and I have all the way up until now. Um, and even though I don't follow anime as closely anymore because it's kind of steered away from the kind of stuff that I really enjoyed from yesteryear, I will still always, you know, now and forever always look at animes from this era and any anime that was released by Manga Entertainment, you know, very fondly. And 
just to put a bow on it, you need to go out there and you need to experience Devil Man. It'll put hairs on your chest. It'll allow you to grow. It'll make you grow a set of balls. It's like some kind of m magic, manly man tonic, and you need to see it. And Halloween is probably the most suitable time to see it. So go out there and go find it. Otherwise, I'm coming to get you. You better fucking believe it.